Hello everyone, Dr. Zia Tahir here. This tutorial is about 2D heat transfer analysis in ANSYS workbench. And the problem is steady state heat transfer through composite chimney. So that is a composite chimney. Inside is concrete and outside is brick. So the description of the problem. A chimney constructed from two different materials shown in the figure. The inner layer is constructed from concrete with the thermal conductivity of 0 0.07 BTU per R inch per degree Fahrenheit. The outer layer is constructed from bricks with a thermal conductivity of 0 0.04 BTU per R inch Fahrenheit. So the temperature of hot gases on the inside surface is assumed to be 140 degree Fahrenheit. With a convection heat transfer coefficient of 0 0.037 BTU per R in square per degree Fahrenheit, and the outside is exposed to the surrounding air having temperature of 10 degree with a corresponding convection heat transfer coefficient of 0 0.012. So that is a problem description. And what's required? Determine the temperature distribution within the concrete and with the brick layers under steady state conditions so need to find temperature distribution so let's say like the temperature distribution along this path or along that path or along that path or along that path and then plot the heat fluxes through each layer so through each layer like concrete and then concrete and brick heat flux and this is solved example from chapter 9 analysis of two dimensional heat transfer problems of the book finite element analysis theory and application with ANSYS by Said Mavani fourth edition so that is the fourth video tutorial of this series and other three tutorial which are relatively simpler than this one so you can watch here in playlist and silver band thermal analysis so here is the outline of steps required for analysis in and silver bench or the steps which i am going to follow the first one to start a project steady state thermal then in engineering data need to add materials then geometry using design modeler sketch and then geometry then in the model to the geometry material assignment and then a creation of a path to plot temperature distribution and heat heat flux then connection between the two surfaces like concrete and bricks then mesh then applying boundary conditions that in the steady state thermal like that is uh, convection then solution required that temperature contour plot and temperature about that path then the total heat flux for the whole uh, chimney and then total heat flux through that path and then to solve it and in the results temperature along the path and total heat flux so these are the steps which i'll follow to solve this problem so the first step is to start a project which is steady state thermal and here is ansys workbench and so that in the toolbox analysis systems and double click on steady state thermal and that is steady state thermal and then these are the seven steps for that engineering data geometry mesh setup solution and results so i'm going to save it somewhere in my computer so i saved that project at composite chimney in my computer the next step is in engineering data need to need to add materials so there are two materials one is concrete the other one is bricks so in engineering data click on to engineering data and then you'll have that new tab for that engineering data and you have click here to add material so i am going for bricks and for bricks need to add isotropic thermal efficiency so here you have so the units for isotropic thermal efficiency given our BTU per R inch foot. So here 
यूनिट्स आर बी टी यू पर फुट पर सेकेंड और बी टी यू पर फुट पर आर सो आई एम गोइंग टू चेंज दैट आई एम यूजिंग दैट यूनिट बी डी यू पर फुट सो आई हैव चेंज दैट थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ ब्रेक टू बी टी यू पर आर फुट फ्रॉम इंच एंड इट इज पॉइंट जीरो फोर एट सो आई एड इट हेयर पॉइंट फोर एट सो नाउ दैट ब्रेक मटीरियल सो अ न्यू thermal conductivity is assigned similarly i am going to add concrete so i have created concrete with a thermal conductivity of 0.084 and i am going to uncheck that one so disable that default structure speed so i am going to save it so once it's saved so now i can close that next step is in the geometry need to select analysis type type as 2d so for that one here click on geometry click on geometry and from view check on the properties and geometry and then you have here 2d and then in the geometry the next step is to start new design modular geometry so right click on that and new design modular geometry it will take some time to open so that is new design modular so that is a design modular and in that design modular i am going to draw it sketch it so here sketch so preferably hot surface then give a dimension that concept and then you know here is the hot surface let's say concrete it's inner it's a square and inner side is 12 and the out thickness is 1 meter so outer side is 14 so for that concrete first need to change units so units are inches and that is 8 inch so i want to draw it in xy plane at 2d in xy plane so that is xy plane and then that is the plane facing So in the sketching, go to setting, and in the grid, show grid in 2D, and then snap, and the major grid spacing is one inch, and then steps one inch because I have all that dimension, uh, like in inches. So that in the setting, so you'll have that now grid, or you can go like. Ten, and then let's say ten inches, and then ten like this one. Okay, so now in the draw, need to draw uh, draw two rectangles. So that is one rectangle. I am just giving it random dimension for inner, and then that is for outer. So now that I have drawn them, and then need to go to dimension and display dimensions. So general. So click for that one is a ten inch. That is ten inch. Then the second one is fifteen inch, and the fifteen. So ten inch. Actually, the inside is twelve inch. So that is twelve by twelve, and the outside is fourteen by fourteen. So now I want to place right them like uh, in the center. So for that one, you have two option. Either you can go to modify, either drag it. So you can simply drag that one, or otherwise, otherwise in constraint, go to constraint and then use that symmetry property to keep it symmetrical about. Like first about y-axis, so like that way, and then these two, so they are symmetrical. Now uncheck it and click there, and then make it symmetrical, and then these ones. So now that is 
modeled. So here you can see that is a scratch one. Okay, so one sees that scratch one is done. So the scratch dimension, then concept. So the concept, uh, just click on that. And then in concept, surfaces from sketches. Okay, and then generate. And you can see that here one part is being generated. So I named it as concrete. So, I, so that inner side is being named as concrete. The next one, you need to follow the same steps. And the only in operation, you need to add frozen. Like when when is a concept in after concept you need to add operation add frozen so the bricks inside is a square 14 by 14 and outside is a 26 by 26 square so for that purpose here in the sketch sketch 2 and i am going to draw a sketch on top of it so it's very simple a rectangle so right on there okay so it's turned blue it's mean that it is right on the top and then the other one it is required is 26 okay so for that one another rectangle i'm just going for a random rectangle okay so that is a random rectangle and dimension display dimension and in general I am going for that is 29 and that is 25 so both required as 26 so and then with the constraints so you can add a symmetry here for both of these so it becomes symmetrical and then symmetry about x-axis so that is being um, symmetrical so now the modeling I'll go sketch and then sketch and then dimension and then concept. So here in the concept, surfaces from sketches and important here. Important here, apply and then here, add frozen. So when you have two, so to uh, give a connection between these two, you need to add frozen okay and then generate so now you can see that there are two surfaces one in the inner surface one the outer surface so the, that one i'm going to rename that as bricks so for concrete if you go surface catch one for concrete so i left that operation as add material but for surface to sketch two I need to add frozen so now that design is complete so i can save that and then so once it's saved i can simply close that design modeler the next is in the geometry you need to uh, in the, go in the model and then so for that model double click on model and it will open a new window so that is now new window for model and the first we need to assign material but before that need to change the units so in the home while clicking on that model in the home so you have these units so it is taking that units as inch then pound fahrenheit and then second or other one is foot pound fahrenheit so let's say i am going for inches because uh, actual units they were in inches or otherwise you can click here to change the units so inches pound units are there so the first is in the geometry i have two there concrete so there is a question mark on and then that highlighted assignment so i am going to select concrete for that and then in the bricks so like that one so the, that part is done i have assigned the material 
Next step is to create path using construction geometry and why the path is required because uh, temperature distribution about that one or temperature distribution about that one is required and first I'll see that where is the there is the origin for this system so I'll go to the model and then in the model there is a construction geometry I'm going to create a path so that is a path and it is asking about that what are the coordinates so I want to draw a path from here going upward so from inner hot surface to outer cold surface and for that one need to put coordinates so now uh, for the start coordinates 0 and 6 and end 0 and 13 are being added so now that is a path so i am going to rename that path a let's say so that path is being created next step is to check connections and for that contact contact region and the type bonded so these two surfaces i am assuming that they are bonded and for that one go to connection and then contact and then contact regions so here you can see that that is two region although here they are shown as blue so inner and that is a concrete and then brick and then type here is bonded so you can use any other further than bonded required next step in the model is mesh and for that one by defining any element size so need to create mesh so here is the mesh and for the mesh display type using geometry physical preference is mechanical okay and then element order is program control and the default value for the inch so let's say i am going to use that half inch 0.5 okay and then generate mesh so with the half inch that is being generated or otherwise i can go for a quarter inch and then update that so with the element size 0.25 inch so that is the mesh and i'm going to use that one so next step is set up in the steady state thermal need to apply boundary condition and for that one in the environment tab go to convection and then scope geometry and then select all those edges and then the definition film coefficient and temperature so for that purpose here is a steady state thermal so go into steady state thermal and then in the environment there is a convection and i am going to rename that convection at inside okay and then for that inside i'm going to select the edges with so those four edges are selected to apply so it's a four edges so inside temperature is 140. so for inside uh, Heat transfer coefficient is 0 0.037 BTU per hour, but the default unit uh, uses second, so it is 1.0278 in front raise per minus 5. So for that one here, 1.0278 E minus 5. So that is here you can see on inside the convection is being applied, and now for outside. So geometry first need to select with control like four edges they are selected apply so here four edges the temperature outside is 10 and the transfer coefficient for outside is 3.333 3 e raised bar minus 6 so that one I'm going to rename that as convection outside. So now the convection inside and convection outside both are being applied. So E is 1.0278 in 10 raised per minus 5. The other one is 3.333 in 10 raised per minus 6. Next step in the solution, you need to create temperature for full and then temperature for along that path. 
so for that purpose in the solution there is an option insert thermal temperature and that is a temperature for all bodies and otherwise you can go here solution in the thermal temperature and that temperature along that path i am going to rename that so temperature along that path and for that one then here for temperature path the matrix selection is path and then path a okay so that is the path a from inside to outside next step is in the, again in the thermal total heat flux and total heat flux through that path so for that one for the solution right click on that insert thermal then total heat flux and that total heat flux for all bodies alternatively in the solution thermal total heat flux so total heat flux and then for that one the total heat flux i'm going to rename that total heat flux along the path and here the geometry selection is path and then here you have path a so now that all the solution which is required is done so the next step is solve so here click on the solution and then solve it will take some time to get results so as green tick appeared on all that what is the solution required so results are ready now so the next step is to plot temperature distribution about that path which is through concrete and then through bricks so for that one click on that is a temperature profile and then that is the path and here is along that path the temperature distribution and then by default it is 47 for that path so like that is number of sampling is 47 so i have here like the total length of that is 7 and element size i set as 0.25 so there are 28 steps are required so number of sampling i'm one less i'm going to apply there and then i solve it again so here you can see the temperature along that path is okay so here you can see the temperature 124 and then temperature at the interface is 11.67 and it goes down so like that is the temperature distribution and similarly that is the total heat flux and that is the total heat flux distribution like that is 1.567 into 10 to raise power minus 4 and its units are btu per second per inch square so that is the total heat flux along that path and then that is the total heat flux here that is the total heat flux and that is uh, total temperature distribution everywhere and that is the temperature uh, that is the temperature along that path and that is the total heat flux along that path and so with this all steps are done and then with all that steps done so that heat transfer analysis about that composite chimney that is all done another summary so that is a problem uh, composite chimney inside concrete and outside brick and temperature distribution and then heat flux is required for that and then these are the steps the first one you need to start a steady state thermal project then need to add material engineering data and then create geometry and then creating geometry most important is that when you are going to draw two different surfaces and preferably start from hot surface to cold surface so start and then for that cold surface use in operation add frozen then in the model assign material to different uh, surfaces then in construction geometry a path is required so where uh, temperature and heat flux need to be uh, plotted and then 
connection between the two surfaces they are bonded in this case and then mesh that is straightforward i'm just using that uh, uh, any element size and then need to apply boundary condition the boundary conditions are convection so in the steady state thermal so convection at inside and outside is required and then the solution temperature contour plot of whole body and temperature along that path is required and then the total heat flux is required then solve hit solve button and it'll give to the solution and then you'll get results of temperature and total heat flux so that is all about this tutorial i hope you like this tutorial thank you very much for watching and you can leave comments for feedback